Would you have volunteered to do all that for him when he was in the position he was in? I came across SoFlo many years ago, and I would periodically go back and watch some of his videos and so forth. I remember he used to do some reactions or reviews on certain music. He would write them out on a paper and he would go through, you know, very meticulous go through and he would explain what he understand about this song. So when I saw this video, I wanted to know what he was going to say. I also came across a situation where a little girl in Ireland, her classmates were getting awarded. And I'd like you to also take a look at that directly after listening to Soul Flow. About the Vibes Cartel thing, it's about people want to know why he left or why him and Shanti don't, um, not, is not together anymore. Lisa Hyper, who is a Vibes Cartel protege, did a skating interview recently and said a bag of things. And we're going to get into those details about those things. Dr. Umar Johnson said something about the woman that Vibes Cartel is with and about Jamaica and Jamaican black people's love for white people. And we're gonna get into that type of a discussion. <laughs> All right, so listen, this is my take, right? On, on what's being said on the uh, Dr. Umar Johnson uh, podcast, um, his comment section about black woman, white woman, black man getting white woman or whatever. Because he sees, or they see Vibes Cartel as a very accomplished individual, regardless of his years behind bars, right? In his superstardom, in money long like train, all these other things, you know, he should have took a black sister. And I'm saying to myself, right, I'm of the, I'm the kind of person that's of the mindset that I love who love me. You know what I'm saying? I love who love me and life is short. One time gone, I was the kind of person that used to be like, nah, black women only. Uh, black people should stick with black people only. But I started having my different experiences in life after I left the US and went to the UK. I think my story goes like this, right? For those who never heard it, I'll keep it real short for you, real short. So I left, I bought a plane ticket when I was 17 years old. I was about to turn 18 and I told my family, cause I have family in the UK and I said to them, I'm going to the army and they're very much not into army stuff. So, and we're in the same age group and they had just came to the U.S. for vacation, right? So they were like, no, don't do that. Come on over to the U.K. Let's see what you could do over there. You know what? What will come of your life over there if you maybe it's just the U.S. So at the time, my mom, my legal guardian, my parents would not sign off on me traveling anywhere by myself. So me knowing that my 18th birthday was approaching, I bought my ticket at 17. May I work from me at 14. So I always have money. I see a little money, may I help my mother pay the bills and all kind of something. Uh, bought my ticket and couldn't wait. And the week of my 18th birthday, I left the U.S. And I went to, to the U.K. And I had such a good time over there that they uh, they had to threaten me with deportation for me to come back to, <laughs> for me to come back to the U.S., right? But I'm saying, in the meantime, while I was there was the first time my eyes were really open to people just wanting to help you with no strings attached. People just wanting to see good for you, even if they didn't really know you like that or whatever. And for most of the situations that, because this is my first time away from family, I'm on a side of the world where I ain't really got much help. The family I went over there with, me and them kind of severed ties because they started moving funny, like within a short space of time of me being there. You know what I mean? And I hadn't really figured the place out yet. So I pretty much moved on. So shout out to Albi. Uh, Albi used to have Albi's unisex um, barbershop and beauty salon in Wandsworth. Uh, and I used to live in on Stratton Hill, walking into Brixton. Anyhow, every time I got into anything and needed rescue or assistance or help, it was never my people. And when I say my people, it was never my kind of people. You know how we say all oh, skin folk and kin folk? I think the universe was, how should I say it? I'm looking for an impactful word. Like I think the universe, the universe was burning that into my conscious that good people come in all shades and shapes and whatnot because I had a different perception, right? 
And that different perception I learned later is what got a lot of us hurt. Because you really believe that these, oh, I'm going to be among my people because these are my people, not knowing that your people could be the wickedest set of people to you, right? And then you're looking at people who could actually really help you, and you're like, nah, I don't really mix with their kind. I stick to my people. Well, you just, your opportunity just passed, or your rescue just passed, or your help just passed. So I came back looking at life, I came back looking at life in a whole different way, man. And, and based on that, I've formed this over the years now in a more mature mindset that you go for who helps you, man. You go for who who is there when you are down and out. Who is there when your fame is not at the top? Who is there when your pocket ain't dripping and everybody ain't running to you? And who is there when you're being kicked while you're down, when you're in desperate need of help, when you're in a situation that look like you ain't never going to make it out of it? And if I look at Vibes Cartel's situation, that's how it was. Many times I did stories and it never came to fruition that he actually came out. So tell I had a following of people over here that used to say, Every story I did, here you go again with that cartel stuff. Listen, him now nah, come out. Y'all waste your energy. Y'all waste your time. So flow, y'all waste your breath. Him are dead in a prison in a Jamaica. Remember, me tell you that. And I kept saying, no, he coming out. One thing I've said over the years is, if somebody is fighting for their life and their freedom in a situation like that, they want to know that you are with them and you believe too that they're going to come out, even when it looks bleak, right? So for the person who is willing to hold you down in them kind of situation, there, that person deserves some level of something good. You know what I mean? And that's what I saw happen in this particular situation with Vibes Cartel. Um, speaking to Saddam since 2015, she been there holding him down, running his accounts, all this other stuff. You, you know dedicating herself to him basically and helping him to fight for his freedom while constantly being in contact with him visiting as much as she can keeping his spirits up man if you ain't never did no time you probably won't even understand i didn't i never did time but i i was in the military and i was in the military to see us being gone my unit used to deploy for a long time we didn't do no navy deployment two months and you home uh, four weeks out at sea and you back. And even those guys get cheated on a lot. My longest deployment was almost 16, was it 18 months? 18 months away from home, right? We're only two weeks back home, a two week break in between and a total of 18 months of being deployed. In that deployment, you know how many soldiers got a, I don't want to do this no more letter. I, don't, I can't do this anymore. I've moved on. Or or one of us came home on our two-week break, and we think, yo, I'm going out for a drink because I'm going back into a war zone, and I might not even see my family again. I might not even be alive next time. I might come back in a body bag. And you go out for a drink, and who you see exchanging tongue in the corner of a bar with some strange man? Sergeant so-and-so wife, corporal so-and-so wife, private so-and-so wife. Now, you're going back to these guys downrange, right? And you got to tell them or you not tell them. I don't want this man losing his mind here. I need him because we train together. We fight together. I need him. I don't know if he's going to turn his rifle on me and then himself because you got some people like that. They kill everybody and then kill themselves, right? So you now you baffled with, should I tell him? Damn. But you know how many guys lose their marriage in the military? because they're off on a long deployment and wifey just couldn't hold it. And we talking about six months deployment, one year deployment. So cartel getting 35 before parole, right? Before he's eligible for parole, which means he's not guaranteed to even get out at 35. And then she, uh, shorty saying she can't under the whole that something, you know, she needs some love and affection, some kind of something, something, you know, a warm body next to her, something. She'll go on, hold it quiet, but it busts out and get loud. And then people over here talking about skin color when somebody actually held them down. I would ask all the sisters who are passing these disparaging remarks, would you have been willing to hold them down? The answer is probably no. 
The answer is probably no. Would you have been willing to hold him down for the time, take care of his affairs, hold him down, move yourself there, make yourself available to him, do all these visits on a constant basis, even when you don't want to, traveling back and forth on his behalf, you know what I mean? Making yourself a fixture. Would you have been able to do all that for him? Would you have volunteered to do all that for him when he was in the position he was in? While everybody else outside is telling you, you know he ain't coming out, right? You know he about to be in there for 35 before they even think about parole, right? I can answer that for you. The answer is 99.999% wouldn't and didn't choose to. I also came across a situation where a little girl in Ireland, her classmates were getting awarded by the people of Ireland. I know people like Lorna Chin like to talk about the Irish and so forth. They've been through the same thing we've been through and so forth. But look at this. This video is going viral on the internet. It shows an 11-year-old who is intentionally left out of an award ceremony and does not receive a medal. Watch for yourself. She can't believe it herself, and wonders why they left her out. Then, another girl asks her why she didn't get a medal. Neither the other parents nor the photographer seem to notice that she's the only one left out. Even in the group photo, it seems like nobody noticed that she's the only one without a medal. I agree that you should not hate anyone based on the color or their race or culture or anything like that. But what so fulfilled to understand is that it goes a lot deeper than someone simply being nice to you. I feel that as a man, as men of African descent, as black men, we have a responsibility. If you're simply thinking about yourself and your family, then how are you going to compete against communities and nations and stuff like that? Other groups of people are able to pick up and move into the Caribbean and they can set up a community for themselves. They buy up all this public land and then make it private. How do you compete against that if we're going to think like this right here? Most of the weight fall on the men of the community, the black men. And that is why we are the least respected people around the world when it comes to serious matters. When it comes to entertainment now, when it comes to sports, when it comes to having a good time, people look to us. When it comes to setting trends, people look to us. But when it comes to building, when it comes to serious issues, everybody turned their head the other way. So how do we regain that if we're going to always kiss up to somebody else if we're going to always teach our children to go work for somebody else you see we want to start off where everybody else is at we want to say you know what to hell with building our own house let's just move into their house and then we wonder why we get disrespected so when you have situations like this where people simply hating you based on your race then the man of the community, the woman of the community need to realize we have a responsibility. Because if this happened to an LGBTQ member, then people will galvanize, they will come together and they will ensure that people get in trouble. We are so weak and so divided and so disconnected, so defeated, so broken, that we have to run to them and beg them to punish themselves. We have to run to them and tell them, can you please punish the teacher who did that to our little girl? You see, many of us don't see that little girl as our little girl. I don't even know her, and that hurt me so much. But many of us don't, because it's not your kid, it's not your daughter, and you don't care. Our people don't do that. 
We don't do that. We don't go and hate on some little kid because of their race. We treat everybody good. So that is why I said what SoFlo is saying is very dangerous. I am not going to knock the little girl parents. They have a responsibility. But at the same time, there is nothing that the African man has built where these little kids can go to. If we want them to get educated, if we want them to get a good job, we have to send them to another group of people. The Jews don't have to send their kids to another group of people because they're pulled together. They don't simply say, hey, as long as you treat me good. People like to say, love is blind. Is that a good thing? Do you want to be blind? Is being blind a good thing? No, we got to be calculated. We got to be commonsensical. I'm all about everyone doing good, but I believe that the African community in the Caribbean, we should be able to flourish without people from the UK. We should be able to flourish without people out of Asia. Just the same way as they flourish without us. Why not? What is so hateful about that? Why do people take offense to stuff like that? I totally disagree with Soul Flow, right? I do like a lot of Vibe Scarter music. Whatever that situation is, he's very influential, yes. But I don't believe we should be like dogs, you know? You know, to me, that's like functioning like dogs because somebody feed you, that's where you should go. This idea of go where you're treated good. You know how easy someone can set you up if you think like that? If you're that simple-minded? Do you understand the type of trouble you can put your children in if you teach them to think like that? You don't have to be mean to anyone. You can be good to people, but it doesn't mean you have to neglect what needs to be done, right? And I get it. I know it is so crazy right now that it doesn't matter if you vote for an African person versus a European person versus an Asian person because the African people, their mind is so convoluted or they are so detached from who they are that they are going to do the same thing that any other person would do. And sometimes they even do worse. I get it. It is so confusing right now, but it was designed that way. But regardless, it doesn't mean that you neglect the responsibility that we have to train the youths so that we can develop that mindset again, so that we can look out for each other, so that we don't give each other bad customer service when you see one of us come through the line. I've heard about all these complaints before, where when a European come through the line, an African person would treat them so respectful. But when one of their brethren or sisters comes through the line, then it's a lot of attitude. You know, I heard people say that they rather work for a European person than working for one of theirs. Let's show you how bad it is, but it doesn't mean that we don't have a responsibility. Those ignorant people are going to be there. This is about the vanguards. The vanguards who realize that we got work to do. Our ancestors gave us the blueprint and we are not going to stop. We're going to keep pushing that. We're going to keep grinding towards it. We're going to learn from their mistake and we're going to elevate. We're not going to cow out like so many other people. There are so many weak-minded men and women in our community who bow out so easily. It's a disgrace.